I started this channel with a couple of series, the GameCube Completion series and Is It Worth Your Time? One being a goal to play every game on my childhood console and the other was me playing games that were given to me for free and talking about them and giving my first impressions. When I did these series, I enjoyed them, but I realized a few things. GameCube games are expensive, and my passion for them was way less than I thought I had. So I'm only going to play the big ones that I missed out on when I was a kid. And two, it's hard for me to beat games that I don't care about, but it's easy for me to identify why I don't want to play a game. So I got into the minds of thinking, why don't I play an hour of each game on Game Pass and give my first impressions, thoughts, and feelings, and talk about if I would personally keep playing the game or not, and if I think it's worth other people to give it a shot based on that hour and possibly make a video about that game in the future. So thus, the Game Pass Gambit was born. So here's episode four of the Game Pass Gambit, and if you end up liking this video and want to see more, please Please hit that like button. If you want to see more of what we do here on Spiral Tree Entertainment, subscribe would be appreciative as well. And do let me know down below your thoughts and feelings towards these games as well, because you may change my opinion on continuing them going forward. Do know that all these games are based on my personal point of view and are being played on the Xbox Series X. I don't have a PC good enough to play most of these games. And lastly, thank you again for supporting the channel. I appreciate every single one of you that have come through from the Game Pass Gambit and the movie and TV show stuff that we have started to do here. So with that, let's get started with Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. I've got 24 hours to get rid of this bozo. Well, the entire scheme I've been setting up for 18 years goes up in smoke. And you are wearing his merchandise! So, here we are with Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, a game I have played a part of before, but on a different console. I stopped playing it because something else caught my eye. I believe it was Hades. And when I started playing Bloodstained Ritual of the Night on my PS4 and then Hades came out and I got super into it, I just kind of forgot about Bloodstained. And now here I am looking at this amazing Metrovania game and remembering how stupid I was for not finishing this game because this game is so much fun right from the get-go. Right at the beginning, it just oozes so much charm and beauty. And man, do I want to find out more of what's going on in this game. And my man in the shadows who plays games with me sometimes was like, man, you haven't finished Bloodstained yet? I've 100 percented that game. It's awesome. It has an amazing reputation for a reason. And I just had an amazing time from the first hour. And it's definitely a game that has caught my interest. And I'll definitely recommend from the first hour that you give it a shot. And we'll definitely be making a video about it some point in the future. Bluey, the video game. It's Bluey, the child-friendly TV show that's super popular with children, and I don't have any children, so I didn't really have a real point of reference to the game or the series. So, when this happens, I try to find someone in my life to sort of come with me while I'm playing an hour of this game and sort of give me a point of view that I don't have, because I think that's important. And I can't do it all the time, but I definitely did it with Bluey. So I had my sister-in-law play Bluey with me. And if you're wondering why I had her play Bluey with me, it's because one, she's the easiest person that I could get over to the house that has a child. And two, uh, her child's in the age range that would watch Bluey. And she said a couple of things that she would definitely let her child play this game, who is a young kid. And two, this game was definitely easy enough for a child to grasp. 
and the fact that if your child is into Bluey, that this would be fun for you to play. And three, that the spirit of Bluey will possess your soul while you're playing this game. I don't know what it is, but it just brought a sense of maniacal enjoyment out of my sister-in-law that was really funny to watch. And in hindsight, I wish I had a recording set up of that audio. I didn't expect it to be such a wild experience, but it ended up being that. We ended up beating the whole game of Bluey which is an important thing to note. We played an hour and 20 minutes. We normally just play an hour, but we did an hour and 20 minutes and we beat the game, which is one of those things that makes me realize the value that Game Pass brings in some cases because this game is like $40 normally. And I don't care what the IP is, what the experience is. If I'm getting one hour's worth of video game, maybe three if I'm 100%ing the game for $40, I might be upset for that return on investment. Personally, granted, I don't necessarily believe you need 300 hours out of a $60 video game to have a good time, but one hour out of a $40 video game? Come on! But if you have a kid that's into Bluey and you have Game Pass or you want to speed run it because the Bluey speed run is wild, give it a shot. Otherwise, it's not worth it. Botany Manor. So, Botany Manor is an intriguing case of a video game that is just not right for me. You'll see if you watch the first episode of the Game Pass Gambit, and as well as the just another review of a little to the left, that I enjoy me some vibes-based video games, but it really depends on the type of vibe that I'm getting, and Botany Manor is not the vibe that does it for me. I don't know if it's the pace of the game, or if it's just I'm not a gardening guy, but this game for me just doesn't hit a single note in the hour that I played to make me want to dive deeper into it. It felt like I was just dredging through the game to get to the next game in the series, which I know is going to happen multiple times, but this was one of the first ones where I didn't feel anything. No joy, no frustration, no fun, no boredom, just nothing. And I don't like that feeling. I feel like I'm at my best when I'm doing something, even the monotonous repetitive style games make me feel like I'm doing something. And this game just made me feel like I was doing nothing. And I know that some people really love this game and that's a beautiful thing. Some people find enjoyment in this game. I know because after I played my first hour, I looked at the reviews to kind of see what people thought about this and people really like this game. Game. And it's just one of those things where not everyone has to love the same thing. And the spirit of just taking something and watching it grow, I can see why people enjoy that. I can see why people enjoy Botany Manor, why people think it's fun. But for me, I didn't enjoy it. I can't fully get into it. And genuinely from the bottom of my heart, I would love to hear from someone who has played this game and really liked it. And for you to share with me what you liked about it, because that's how we grow as people and how we learn from each other is through those types of personal experiences. This is a not recommend for me. I am gonna pass on this game. But I can see why people enjoy it, even if it's for a reason I can't really comprehend. Bro Force! Oh yeah, I'm all about more Teddy Roosevelt. Yo, it's time for Bro Force. I'm a huge fan of Devolver Digital Games. Most Devolver Digital Games, most things that they put out, I love, I love getting my grubby little mitts on. I just love it so much. And I end up enjoying every single one of them. And Broforce 
It's one of those games that I played for an hour and it feels like a game that I would not want to play by myself, but would want to experience with others. It was really fun, but not fun for the gameplay reasons. For some reason, it was fun seeing the references and figuring out the puzzles, but it feels like it would be more fun experiencing this game with friends, going through and seeing the brominator, the bro agent, uh, all of these bro-based pun characters and passing the controller around, just having a good time. It just feels like it would be great to do that. Like sitting at the school computer back in the day, playing flash games with your friends who are watching you play flash games and you're taking turns playing the flash games. That's what I get out of this game. And if you're just having a video game night with your friends, hanging out at your house, cracking jokes, enjoying each other's company, Bro Force seems like that type of game to enjoy with your bros and not to enjoy alone. Broken age. Now, I've got to go and get rid of that mean old monster. <laughs> nah, don't worry about me. I'll be back. Who's your number one buddy? Huh? Huh? Who's number one? Okay. Sure. We'll go see the turtles, I promise. All right, a point and click adventure game where we have one side being a girl who is going to be sacrificed to a monster and she just wants to fight it. Take it down to the people around her just being like, no, don't break the status quo. Just die, woman. And the other side being a space adventure where this kid's being put in baby's first spaceship and gets offered the opportunity to take a more dangerous mission. And these are the places where I got to in my first hour with this game. And I like point and click adventure games if the story clicks with me enough, if you will. I'm a big fan of Monkey Island and I'm super excited to get to return to monkey island because i know that game's on game pass and i haven't played that game yet and i'm ready for my boy Guybrush threepwood and my love of those games makes me a sucker for pretty much all point and click adventure games to the point where i am intrigued about broken age even though the story at the beginning doesn't fully interest me and the aesthetic and art is not my cup of tea most double find games are not but I do know that Double Fine normally makes a really good game, and I'm kind of interested in seeing where it takes me. I am going to play through the rest of this game because I'm interested in playing it, but I don't know if that's going to become a video in the future. I don't know if I have enough to talk about in that regard. But it did intrigue me from the beginning, but I'm not sure if I could recommend it to anyone. If you're a fan of point and clicks, go for it. If you're not, I don't think this is a good entry point to change your mind. So I would not recommend that you give it a shot. Bro Tato. Money, money, money. So, Broke Tato's a roguelite, if you will, about a potato, and you get six weapons, and you can combine them to make them stronger, and you get a bunch of items, and you get to play as different types of potatoes, and I'm not gonna lie, this game's pretty basic. It's real straightforward. It doesn't have a lot to add that would be something that a mobile game would not be capable of, and this game is, in fact, on the mobile game store. I did find that out, but I would not be doing my truth and telling you the honest thing that happened which was I sat down to play this game for my hour long demo which is I record and I keep a timer to my side where I play as long as I can or where I can feel like I can get to acceptable stopping point which is around that hour mark but I try not to go too far over some games it ends at 55 minutes some games it ends at one hour five minutes but I ended up playing this game for like three hours straight, which happens to me all the time when I play roguelikes games. It's just, I want my first win and I wasn't willing to stop until I got my first win. All roguelike games get me. I have 400 hours already in Balatro for some reason, 
you know, the new poker roguelike that came out a little bit ago. I can't wait to pick up Hades 2 when I get paid again and can afford to buy Hades 2. I love this genre so much, and Bro Tato is one of those games where I know I'm gonna play a lot of it in my spare time. I don't know if I can make a full video out of it yet, but I don't know if there would be a lot of unique stuff to talk about. So I'm just gonna give you my recommendation to play this game, cause it's a lot of fun to just sit down for a couple of hours and play it. So recommend that you definitely check it out. So this is post recording editing Isaiah here to inform you that I cannot stop playing bro Tato. It's become a problem, holy Heck, this game is so mind-numbingly fun. So mind-numbingly fun. I've completed a couple runs at this point, and I will be working on a video for Brotato. Just wanted to let you know this in this video that that is definitely happening. This game has been so much fun. You should definitely play it. Give it a shot. You will have a good time. Brothers, a tale of two sons. Brothers. So, this game is really weird for me because I'm placed in a weird situation for the first time on the Game Pass Gambit that I have to explain to you all. And it's the fact that I don't think I can fully play through Brothers and give this game a full chance. I'll explain to you why. Uh, the game has a unique dual control character system where you're playing as both characters at the same time, which is cool and fun, but playing through the first 30 minutes of the game, it started to like physically hurt my hands. Uh, you'll learn as we, you know, grow as a community and you get to know me more. Um, I have a slight disability with my hands and sometimes the fine motor skills that I have with my hands don't work the way that they're supposed to fully. Um, it's actually one of the reasons that I got into video gaming when I was younger, a sort of assistance with rehab and to help with this fine motor skill issue and help me like grow as a person and learn how to do a lot of the things that I needed to learn. But for some reason, the way Brothers needs me to move the controller at the multiple exact angles and at the exact times where I can't do the resting that I do sometimes when I play video games makes it very hard for me to play this game. And it was very fun for the small amount of time that I can play it. But what's very important when it comes to gaming and being a person in general General is knowing your own personal limitations. And if my hands were hurting after 20 minutes and getting to that hour mark where it was just getting worse and worse, uh, there's only going to be more and more difficulties for me when those puzzles get harder and more time sensitive and the angles have to be more exact. I can play other games often because, you know, I can stop certain movements and adapt in certain ways and go through that, but I don't want to have to pause over and over and basically pause buffer throughout the entirety of the game of Brother. Others. So this may be a game that if I want to pursue further, because I am very interested in playing this game, I may have to play it with assistance from a friend. If that is something that you would be interested in seeing me do, please let me know. I will make a video about this with adding my own personal points of views and struggles and things like that. I just have to coordinate with a second person. So let me know if that's something that interests you and I'll start working on that. I'll get that ball rolling for you as a community because I care about your opinions. Brutal legend. I carry the M16 and yo, you carry that, that, that guitar. Yo, this game is dated to the late 2000s. It's so dated in the way that it's metal as metal wants to be in the late 2000s humor that it has. And the gameplay is relatively simple and it's solely carried by the fact that your main character is voiced by Jack Black. But Jack Black.
black can only carry the game so much for me. And playing this game for an hour and getting to the point where your girl character is injured and you learn the mechanics of your headbangers, which means you're playing this like live RTS who meets a beat em up game with your own Ocarina of Time esque guitar solos. I just get this feeling that it's going to be too much for me to want to handle at a time with the reward being an average game at best. I don't want to have to be live attacking things while guiding my units at the same time, especially because I can't really get the feeling like I can split my units to attack multiple places. It just feels like I'm going to have to keep track of a lot of stuff that I really don't want to keep track of. And I know it's just going to slowly wear itself out where the humor is going to be like, ha 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 ha, like chuckles at the beginning. And then at the end, I'm going to be like, Eddie, shut up. You're weird, bro. And I'm going to get mad. And it's like the headbangers like go over there. I said, go over there, not over here. I said, go over there. It's going to be a problem that I don't want to deal with it. I had the opportunity to play this as a kid too. And I wasn't interested as a kid. And I'm not interested as an adult. I really don't feel like even playing this game for an hour brings me any sense of true enjoyment. It really just feels annoying as it possibly can be. This one is not for me. If it's for you, you do you out there. But for me, I got to give you my opinion. And dog, this one's not it. Burnout Paradise Remastered. Wow, what do you say after that one? Brutal, savage, wrecked. Absolutely taken down. So racing games and me have a history together and that history is usually I'm not good at them. Like most video games, if I'm being honest with you. But I usually have something a little extra for me that gets me to really like them. They have to have a good multiplayer component, has to have a good fun boost mechanic, you know, fun open world. Luckily, my first hour Hour of Burnout Paradise Remastered uh, was just fun in the open world, crashing into stuff, being bad at racing games, exploring Paradise City, looking for new encounters and the stuff to do, upgrading your license to the new cars and things of that nature. And Burnout Paradise is very much the open world style, not a big storyline, just kind of having fun, shooting kind of racing game. And those are fun in their own right. And I had a moment it where I was like playing this demo that I do where I was playing with one of the DLC cars that they gave me and it just turned on infinite boost and I kept hitting cars over and over again and normally in a game you get frustrated when you do that you're like man I wiped out here I wiped out there I can't figure out how to do this turn but I was just smiling genuinely laughing just being like man that was a bad one look at that that was rough it was just an all around enjoyable experience where I don't think I'm gonna make a solo video video for Burnout Paradise, but it'll go in that compilation bucket for the future where I have a couple of these games that sort of piqued my interest, but I don't have enough to talk about where it's a full video. I'll definitely make like a compilation video of those in the future and go from there. But it's definitely going to be a game that I'm going to play around, have fun with. Definitely recommend it if you haven't tried Burnout before. Give it an hour. See if it's a game for you. It's a fun open world sandbox experience where you can just sit down and have a good time for a couple hours when you get off of work. Call of the Wild, the Angler. Yo, we be... Cheesy. Yo, we be fishing. And this is the first fishing game that I've played in my life, I think, that I fully don't enjoy. And that's wild to me. I love fishing. I love to fish in real life. I love fishing mini games in almost every game that I play. I love the ability to fish in games in general. I've played through Sega Bass Fishing for the Sega Dreamcast. I don't know how many times. It may be unironically one of my favorite games of all time. And I know that's like big middle age energy to love fishing games in general, but Call of the Wild Angler is just too in depth of fishing for me to enjoy. I don't want to play a fishing game where I need to control every little aspect of fishing like a real fishing sim and not be able to go into the water. Like I walked into three inches of water and like, hey man, you can't do that. You can't damn it. 
Mr. Water, bro. You can't do that. This is a public park. And I'm just like, dude, let me walk into the water and have a little fun. This is not the real world. In the real world, yeah, dude, I get it. It's like, you're protecting the wildlife. Makes sense. But in a video game, it's absolutely tedious, annoying, and not enjoyable in the slightest. And I want to play video games to have fun, not sit here and wait forever. Sega Bass Fishing is fun because it weirdly has enough of like sense of timing to act and like moving and action. And fishing in real life is fun because honestly, if you're by yourself, you're just vibing in nature and enjoying the, your surroundings. Or if you're with your friends, you just get to chill back hang out with people away from the world and just catch fish and throw them back in the pond or catch fish for you to cook later in the night. Sit back in the boat, sit on the pier, catch up, have a good time. But with Call of the Wild, the angler, there's no boys to catch up with. There's no people to hang out with. There's no anything to have fun with. In the first hour, it's just you, the pier, too many details, too many bobbers, too many menus to have to worry about, too many things to keep track of. It's just absolutely not worth the time investment. And with that, we're at the end of this episode of the Game Pass Gambit. I appreciate you very much for sticking around to the end of the video. Again, if you like what you see, give us a like down below. I value your opinion on these games that we've talked about today. So feel free to comment down below and give me your opinion on some of the games that we've talked about. And you may change my mind on playing more of these games in the future. And like always, I thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch these videos. You didn't have to, and I appreciate you for doing that. And I hope that I've earned the right to see you in the next video. Goodbye.